Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? The shadow knows. <laughs> Once again, the Mutual Network brings you the thrilling adventures of the shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. Now, the shadow. <laughs> The shadow who feeds the forces of law and order is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago on the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret. The hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, Ghost Without a Face. Third act, Mr. Johnson. Curtain going up. Third act, Mr. Johnson. Is anything wrong? <laughs> Door's not locked. Maybe he's not in his dressing room. Oh, I'd better have a look. Mr. Johnson. Oh, well, there you are, sir. At your dressing table. He's still in your dressing robe. Third act curtain is up, sir. Raise it high, Billy. That pack of stupid ingrates. We'll never gaze upon the handsome face of Gaylord Johnson again. What's the matter, Mr. Johnson? You sound sick. Yes, sick and dying. You see only my back. Now, now, Billy, look upon my face. Mr. Johnson, your face... It's bleeding. Ripped and slashed with my own razor blade. There's blood on your arms. Your wrists are cut. I cut them. Yes, I died. No. But they killed me. They spurned me off. Let me go. But they can't escape the horror that will return to them after death. Let me go. Let me go. You see me again. I'll return from the dead to haunt this theater for eternity. Help somebody. Mr. Johnson kill himself. Mr. Johnson's dead. He killed himself. Help. Yes, Mr. Ames, I have heard stories about your theater, and it's haunted that some fantastic ghost without a face roams around at night in that house. The police search the place thoroughly. There's nothing more they can do, and that's why I've come to you, Mr. Cranston. As an amateur criminologist, can't you help me track this thing down? You say you've actually heard this ghost, that you've seen it? Others have too, Mr. Cranston. Actors I've hired and tried to rehearse there. I can't see the cast together. Let's try this, Mr. Ames, if you want to open your theater again. Rehearse in some other place until the night your new play opens. On opening night, have the entire theater searched thoroughly to be sure no one can be hiding. This thing is a ghost. You can't find it. Mr. Ames, you and I both know there aren't any such thing as ghosts. I've seen and heard. Gaylord Johnson's ghost with its face slashed and bloody. It, it, it's horrible. So horrible that it almost drove Billy, our young stage manager, out of his mind. His mind is still affected. His memory is gone completely. I tried to talk to him, Mr. Cranston. He, he doesn't remember a thing. Mr. Ames, it seems to me the best thing to do to help you is to deliberately invite your ghost to appear. For you? Yes. Whatever it is, it's apparently trying to keep your theater closed by frightening people away. It's certain to do something if you open your house. Well, I don't think it's wise, Mr. Cranston, but I'll do it if you insist. Good. And I'll be there with you to see if I can see and hear this ghost of Gaylord Johnson. <laughs> The 
musty, dark old place. It's backstage, isn't it, Mark? Mm-hmm. Well, first act's over, darling, and so far no ghosts has appeared. Mm. Oh, I-, I think we better wait here in the wings out of the way until Mr. Ames comes off stage. Yes. The well, place seems to be going very well. Ames has really spurred on this one, hasn't he? No. Lamont, what really happened here that night a year ago? Well, the third act had just started, as I understand, when Billy, the young stage manager, came running to Mr. Ames in a terrified, hysterical condition, telling him that Gaylord Johnson had killed himself. And when Mr. Ames reached the dressing room, the body had disappeared? Yes. There was blood on the floor and the dressing table and on the boy where Johnson had grabbed him before he died. And no trace of the body has ever been found? No. I still don't see how it could possibly have been taken from the theater that night. That stage was crowded with actors. But the fact remains, it never has been found. Oh, Mr. Cranston, this way. Oh, hello, Mr. Ames. Well, how do you like the play? Oh, it's very good, Mr. Ames. Where did you find that wonderful old actress, Madame Trombetta? Uh-huh. Because she did a magnificent bit in that last scene. Uh, okay. She's been in this country since the war. She's a real trooper, Miss Lang. Now, here she comes now. No? Uh, Madame Trombetta. Oh, Mr. Ames, it be gone. Beautifully, Dorothy, huh? And here are two new friends of yours. Prove it. Miss Lane, Mr. Clint. How do you do, Madam Chambetta? Oh, it's a beautiful day. Thank you. Thank you so kind. I must change my costume now. I will see you later. Perhaps after the show. Certainly. Second act. Places. Places, please. <laughs> I uh, suppose you noticed, Mr. Cranston. I asked the police to surround the place. Had the place searched tonight? Thoroughly. Before any of the actors came in, there couldn't be anyone human hiding here. They go the lights, Lamont. Oh, yes. Well, I think we'd better stay backstage here. I, I wish you would, both of you. Uh, we can stand right here. Ooh. Goodness, it's awfully dark. <laughs> yes, this is the murder scene in the dungeon. It's quite a start. Mm-hmm. Stay back the curtain. No! Uh, no! Oh, that scream. That wasn't on stage. Your Come from one of the dressing rooms, isn't it? Madam Trombetta. Where's the dressing room? Quickly, but this way. Down this corridor here. Come on, quick. Something horrible is happening. Uh, this is the room. The door's locked. Help me break it in. Oh, hurry, hurry. Uh, once more, Mr. Ames, hard. Oh, there it goes. Down there. There's no one in. The room's empty. Well, we just heard a voice calling for help from this room. It's the ghost. Johnson's ghost. He's killed her. He's killed her and spirited her body away. Lamont, what's happening in that theater? First a young boy and now Madame Trombetta? I don't know yet, Margot. I'm going back there tonight and find out. Well, darling, you've gone there before at night and the ghost has never appeared to you. I think he might this time, Margot. If he's killed Madame Trombetta and hidden her body in there. Why do you? I was just ghost chasing before, Margot. This time, I think we may find a killer. Oh, Lamont, look at that old theater. So dark, so ugly. It's almost as if it was challenging. It's probably hidden plenty of secrets. It's been standing there for years. Darling, I'm suddenly very afraid. Let, let, let's wait. Come on, darling. Stick close to me. Now, we'll go down this alley here to the stage door. Well, all right. I guess I'd go through most anything to get even with whatever it was that harmed poor Billy. The old actress. So. Yes, Here's the door. So dark, I can't see a thing. What? Come on, the door's open. I haven't touched it yet. And who are you? Who's coming into this theater? Go away. Get away quickly. Well, I'm Lamont Cranston. Who are you? What are you doing here? Well, I'm Pops, the night man and the janitor. Hey, I, I've seen you two before. Well, you best keep away from here. Mr. Ames has given us permission to come here any time, Pops. Well, tonight maybe you come once too often. Why do you say that? I heard the voice tonight. In there. Loud. Angrier. Angrier than before. You've heard the ghost, too? It tells me to follow. But I know that there is death and madness where it leads. But why do you stay here, then, Pops? Well, there's not many a job open for an old fellow like me. I'm safe if I don't listen. But now don't you, too, be going in there. We've got to tonight, Pops. You stay here at the door. Don't let anyone else in. We'll call you if we need you, Pops. 
All right. But remember, I warned you. I can't see a thing. Here, take my hand. Oh, have you got the flashlight? No, no, not I, I thought you had. Oh, great. Really, the doctor. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Darling, just what do you expect to find? Wandering around in here and down. Right, I want to take a look at Johnson's dressing room first. That was where Johnson died, and Madame Trombetta was killed. I wish I'd waited outside with Pops. <laughs> so, Theater is certainly the perfect background for a ghost story. Yes, I wouldn't be surprised if. Oh! What's the matter, darling? Come on. With the body hanging by its neck. I. I. Just want to do it. Good stuff. There is something. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> You, you bumped into one of those big sandbags that's suspended from the right. Oh, no. No. <laughs> uh, come on, darling. We'll get this over with as fast as possible. Oh. I'll see the dressing that Johnson used is just down here, I think. Uh, yeah. That's it right there, isn't it? Yes. Oh, I am my friend. Wait. There's a voice coming from inside the dressing room. It's the ghost. It is. We're going to have a look at it. But... Come in, my friend. And gaze upon death. Lamont, there's someone sitting there at the dressing table. Yes, it does look like someone. My face. A ripped and bloody face. Oh, sorry. It's the killer Johnson's voice. The horror of my face will drive men mad. I'm going after that thing. Lamont, it's falling. <laughs> what is it? Nothing but a stage dummy, Margot. What? He was in that dungeon scene. Someone threw it on this dressing table chair. But there was a voice in this room, Lamont. I heard it. Yes, I heard it too, Margot, but there's no one in here but us. Go! 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 Before the horror strikes. Well, now the voice is coming from somewhere on the stage. Stay here, Margot. I've got to go after it. Lamont, don't leave me. Lamont, take me with you. Go! Do blundering fool! Lamont, where are you? Over here, Margot. Come here, take my hand. It, no, it's you are you? No madness, Margot. You shall look upon terror and death. Where look out, Margot. Margot, look. Well, well, darling, it's so dark I can't see you. Just reach out your hand, and I'll. I'll... Oh, oh, there you are. What's going? Lamont, this isn't you, is it? No. Lovely lady, you are holding the hand of a ghost. Now, back to the shadow. their search for the horrible ghost in a haunted theater, Lamont Cranston and Margot Lane have become separated on the huge, dark stage. Thinking the figure in the dark beside her was Lamont, Margot has taken its hand when she discovers it is the ghost of the dead actor they come to find. Let me go. Let me go. Let go of my hand. Let Margot, go. Darling, Let... darling, it's Lamont. Oh. Oh, Lamont, No. No, I felt the cold, dead hand. It was the ghost. I know it Whatever was the ghost. Whatever it was that held you, I must have fallen into the well. Oh. Oh, darling. I'm sorry. I... Why, well, I'm home, aren't I? I? I must have fainted. You did, darling, and I brought you home with Pop's help. Well, what happened to you? Your clothes were all torn. Something dropped me through a trap door on that stage. Oh. Lucky I found my way out of that cell and up through the orchestra pit. There are ghosts there, aren't there? There is something horrible in that theater. Yes, Margot. Something horrible, but not ghosts. I'm sure of that now. No ghost would have to resort to such earthly tactics as dropping me through a trap door to get me out of the way. Who then, Lamont? Who could it be? I don't know, Margot. I suddenly thought of someone who might help me out. Who? The only living person who saw Gaylord Johnson before he disappeared. Billy, the young stage manager who went to his dressing room to call him that night. But his memory's gone. I might be able to get through to him to help him, Margo. He's going to hear the voice of the shadow when I visit him tonight. Billy, are you asleep? 
sleeping, or is it only your mind that sleeps tonight? Voice. Is it a voice? Can you hear me, Billy? I am your friend. Friend? Yes, Billy. Try to remember. It's curtain time for the third act. Curtain time? Time for the third act, Billy. Call the actors on stage. Call the actors? Call them, Billy. Places, everyone. Places. Places, everyone. Now call the star, Billy. Call Mr. Johnson. No. No. Hurry, Billy. Call Gaylord Johnson. The curtain's up. Up? The curtain's up? Hurry, there's not much time now. He's in his dressing room. Yes. Mr. Johnson. In his dressing room. The door's closed, Billy. Mr. Johnson. Third act. Places, please. That's it, Billy. Curtain's going up. Try the door, Billy. Maybe something's wrong. The door wasn't locked. And open it quickly. No. No. Open the door, Billy, quickly. The curtain's up. Yes. Yes, open the door. There's Mr. Johnson in his dressing table, in his robe. He's turning. He's turning now. Yes, turning to me. All right, Billy. What did you see? I saw him. He got up and came toward me. I saw his awful bleeding face. And... And then he... And then he... Then he dropped dead at your feet? He fell. And I thought he was dead. But you don't know for certain? No. No, I was scared and ran out for help. I don't know whether he was dead or not. You do remember, Billy. The shadow has awakened your mind. The shadow? The shadow? Who are you? I'm your friend, Billy. Yes, my friend. A voice in the moonlight. Shadow, you've helped me. You helped the shadow too, Billy. Go back to sleep now. In the morning, you will remember. The shadow will discover the secret of the ghost without a face. I don't care what Billy told you, Lamont. Even if Taylor Johnson is alive, just the sight of it, Billy, gives me a chill. I'm sure we're on the right track this time, Margot. Well, here's the stage door. Who is there? Oh. Is that you, Mr. Ames? No, Pops. It's Mr. Cranston, Miss Lane again. Uh, no, no, not tonight. They can't let you go in this place tonight. Why, Pops? Well, I'm going. I'm leaving here. I can't stand this job anymore. What happened, Pops? It's that voice. The ghost again. Stronger and stronger each night. Tonight I nearly followed. Now, Pops, buck up. You'll be able to keep your job. I think we can put the finishing touch on your ghost tonight. You just watch the door. If I need you, I'll call. Come on, Margo. Hang on to me this time. Give me the flashlight, Don. Here you are. Are we going back to that person room again? No. I'd like to look around here for a moment, on stage. Oh, what a dark, ghastly place this is. And it's so big. Look, shine the light up there, Lamont. And just look how high that ceiling is. Mm-hmm. And way up there, there's, there's a little wooden balcony running all the way around. You see it? It's a catwalk, Margot. The stagehands hang the sets from there, I guess. Oh. Well, come on, darling. Lamont, that heavy sandbag. Mm-hmm. Right up above us. It's swinging. It's falling. Look out. Lamont! Darling, are you all right? Oh. Oh, yes. I I guess so. Blessing, you were looking up. Yes, a moment later and we'd have... Lamont, you know that something is trying to kill us. Don't you? Yes. I think our ghost is desperate now. It looks like it's going to be a fight for the end. Oh, <laughs> Come, follow me. Come where I beckon. The voice again. Where is it coming from? It sounds like we're coming from Johnson's dressing room down that hallway. Yes. Yes. I come when you call. Look, it's Pops. They're across the stage. I come. I hear the ghost voice now. Pops going into the dressing room, Margot. The door's closing. Come on, Margot, quickly. Door's locked again. I'll help him. Hurry. Get ah! close, Margot. Keep back. Pops! He's fallen. Pops. Come on. Pops, are you all right? 
He disappeared through that door. Out the door to the stage. Get him. Get him quick. Stay here with Pops, Margot. I've got to get out. Don't sit Right, right. I'll, I'll help you, Pops. Here, just put your arms on me and let me get you. But the couch. It's all right. I can manage. Why, Carl? You can stand alone. Wait. Wait, don't cut. What? I'll take your hands away. Throw. It's the one we've been playing. What? Oh, Pops, what are you... Oh. Pops! Stop, oh, come back here! Lamont! There he goes. There he goes, Lamont, of that iris cat to the catwalk. Good. I got him trapped this time. That shadow will bring that ghost down to earth. <laughs> They'll never get me. They'll never find me up here. There's someone coming up the fire escape. Put down that revolver. You cannot escape the shadow. I I can't see anyone, but I hear him coming up. Up, up on the catwalk with me. Yes, Pops. Up on the catwalk. The shadow comes closer to you. Where? Where are you? Who are you? Closer and closer. The shadow comes to you. It's a ghost. Another ghost. You won't get me. I'll find you and kill you. <laughs> You'll never find the shadow. I will. If you're up here, I'll find you. Now take that gun. Something's dead hard on me. Oh, it's a ghost. Stop it. Let me go. Drop that gun. Now you're getting down off this catwalk. I don't know what you are, but if I find you, I'll throw you over that rail. Come back here, you fool. Come back. That rail's breaking. If I find you, I'll kill you. Get away from that rail. It's breaking. Look out! And so it was Billy who gave you the idea that Gaylord Johnson didn't really die after all. Yes, Margot. That Johnson was still hiding in that theater. Well, how did Johnson disappear from his dressing room that night after he told Billy he killed himself? The door to the furnace room was right next to his. That's where he went down and changed into Pop's coveralls and beard. He'd actually had to cut his hands to leave traces of real blood. Realistic school of acting, is that it? Besides being a superb makeup artist, he disguised himself as Madame Trombetta when he heard the theater was opening again, used a heavy accent and plenty of veils, killed himself off again to frighten people away. Yes, but how did he manage so that his voice as a ghost seemed to be right in the dressing room with us that first night. He was actually in the next dressing room and spoke through the ventilator, then ran out onto the stage. For goodness sake. But, but why? Why did Gaylord Johnson want to keep that theater closed? Mr. Ames told me that by the second act of Johnson's play, he knew it was a flop. He told Johnson he was going to close it that night. Ames said Johnson threatened him, seemed actually unbalanced with rage, and swore that no one else would ever star in that theater again. That's a strange, twisted ego playing the starring role of a ghost. Yes, and what a fantastic performance. Playing the parts of Madame Trombetta, Old Pops, and the ghost. Then there weren't any murders after all, were there? No, Margot. The only life Gaylord Johnson took was his own when he tried to kill the shadow and fell through that broken railing tonight. Shadow returns in just a moment. This story is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications Incorporated. The characters, names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Again next week, The shadow will demonstrate that the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. (laughs) Next week, same time, same station, the Mutual Network will bring you another strange and thrilling adventure in the shadow's daring battle against the forces of evil. Be sure to listen.
This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.